March 30th, 2015, Monday evening, as Upper St. Clair takes on the Pine Richland Rams in a non-section game. Play has just started. That's ground ball right there, free for anyone's taking, and looks like it might get to a Pine Richland player behind the net. And we're off. Girls coming off a victory against Baldwin uh, last Thursday, a 13-5 score, I believe. Nice, solid victory for them. Now they're playing a rel relatively tough, perennially tough Pine Richland team that the, that the uh, Panthers defeated last year in an overtime game. Oh, looks like someone fell there, but she's back up. Okay, number two out on the arc. And Pine Richland's going to set up again. The uh, the varsity game was a low scoring one in which uh, Pine Richland won four to three with St Clair holding the ball just at the end of the game but just couldn't get get that last shot off, but uh, four to three, Pine Richland wins. Anyway, it's still zero zero here after a minute and a half. Oh, nice sidearm shot there by the Pine Richland Ram player, and it's a one nothing lead for Pine Richland. I think uh, the girl, looks like number 17 scored that goal. And it'll be Chelsea Johnson taking the face off with Tommy Lackner and Molly Krasik on the circle. Oh, it goes right back to Pine Richland again. Yeesh. And it's going to be a foul on upper St. Clair. They've got a player wide away out there. Yep, she found her. And uh, they quickly get moving the ball up the field. But they've had a lot of ground balls, but they're not falling. Oh, she's going to have a free shot on goal and another goal. That's 2 nothing. Quick two goals by the Pine Ridge and Rams with only, um, with only 100 seconds into the game. That, that defender found that ground ball and got, was able to get around our defender and... Um, Score a goal. It's two nothing. Quick deficit for the Panthers, who have yet to have any uh, possession on the ball yet. Both uh, both draws have fallen into the sticks of the Rams. We'll go straight up and into the stick of uh, Pine Ridge and Ram. So Pine Ridge sets up again at the top of the arc. Got balls, pass it, may go out of bounds. No, not enough. The, they're playing the red lines, which are pretty wide field here. All right, so Pine Ridge is taking the ball behind the net. Tommy Latter comes out to defend. Good job there to stop the crease roll. Good defense by Chelsea Johnson. They try the other side of the circle. Number seven is going to run behind the net. They're looking to set up a free shot. Uh, uh, that player almost good stop by Molly. Looks like the. Deny the shooting opportunity. Uh, Jenna Ravazio on the defense. A uh, good block by Lauren Picnic. Let's get that ground ball. Chelsea Johnson comes scooping out with that ground ball. She's got a little space to run. Passes over to Tommy Lackner. He's going to head into the offensive part of the field for the first time for the Panthers, who trailed 2 nothing. three minutes into the game. <coughs> Over to Jaden Malarino, back to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee behind the net, over to Katie White. A little easier to describe the play when you know the players' names. Aaron Lee with the balls, finds Jaden Malarino. 
Molly Krasik, the ball gets away. Ah, Julia's offside. She wanted to get that ball a little too urgently. So the Pirates will be coming back with the ball. She did. Pirates was able to find work the way in a little bit. Wanted to do. Wanted to spot. Oh, finds it out. Let pass there. shooting space on that one, but that's a hard one to call shooting space because those defenders were there before she even started running. Um, but they're going to call it. It's an easy one for a ref who, without much experience to call. <laughs> so this is going to be a pretty good opportunity for Pine Richland. Straight on to the net, not too many players down low. So, oh, but that ball goes wide. Must have kicked off of something. I didn't hear a post, so it might have kicked Lauren's foot. Pine Richland's going to have to set up again. We've gone through five minutes. It's a two nothing game for Pine Richland. Oh, nice shot. Nice low shot. Wow, it's a hat trick. Natural early hat trick for a number seventeen. Three nothing, five and a half minutes into the first half. So Pine Richland comes into this game, I believe, with a one-on-one -on -one record, having uh, lost to Quaker Valley and defeating another team. I, I can't recall the team they beat. So Molly Krasik will take the draw, maybe try and mix it up a little bit. Sinclair has not been too fortunate with the first set of draws. Sometimes just a match of uh, the, right, the right styles. There, that one pops out. Uh, who's going to get that? Chelsea does a good job with that. Good hands. Uh, all right, so they set it up and see if we can, can generate some offense here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're doing all three in front of the net again. Tactic they tried against Chargers Valley. And St. Clair's dispossessed of the ball and by Richard, oh, she, she faked out two players there. It's a long pass, properly collected by a Ram. Rachel Pickton does a good job on defense to deny the entry. Number 17 with a hat trick already at the top of the circle. Chelsea Johnson defending. Oh, my goodness. oh good stop by Lauren. Yes. But everyone's running away from her, making a difficult outlet. Nice catch by Tommy Lackner, close to midfield. She's fouled. Oh, maybe we got an injury here in Pine Richland. So not not she may have to run this one out a little bit with not too many open players. Tommy Lightner with the ball at midfield. Nice move there. Dodge the defender. Switches hands. Gets checked from behind. So gets the pass over to Katie White. Good clear by Tommy. Katie over to Victoria Teep. St. Clair with the ball. Katie White testing the defense. Oh, man. 
that the, that center circle is just clogged with players. Well, Bethel is a different team. <laughs> okay, it's Katie White trying to get in front of the net, challenging, maybe pick up a – well, I don't know why that's not a shooting space when um, it was the same thing against us just prior. That's uh, – is that Victoria Teep going to her left? Uh Over to Katie White, and we'll start up again. She gets checked, and now come the Rams. All right, that's a professional foul there by Jules, kind of let us get back in position. Yep. All right. Got to get back on defense here, guys. All right, we got everyone marked up. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure, but that was a, a low-hanging stick. Yeah. That was Julia on that. Well, that was a nice pass. Good job by Tom. He dispossessed the ball and picks up the ground ball all one time. She gets clear down the side, finds Chelsea in the middle. Chelsea's got some room to run. Stops, pivots. Letting the rest of the defense get down there. And offense. I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Oh, that ball's going loose. Jaden collects it. But that's Aaron Lee with the ball, throws it away. It's going to get past. Tampa did get a shot on goal. No shots on goal yet. Uh, what are we, uh, we're over 10 minutes into the first half. Usually the Panthers get off to a decent start. Yeah. Rams get about 110 yards to goal here. Ball's on the ground. No chance for Upper St. Clair, though. Good movement by the uh, Ram. But they're going to call a foul on Upper St. Clair. Pine Richland ball at the 42-yard line. They've got a couple options here. Yep, she goes wide with it. Over to Maggie Collins, I believe. Yeah, they, they've they given themselves space to make a shot and make a run, and that's all they have to do is beat the one, and there's a goal. It's 4 nothing. So we got a different goal scorer this time for Pine Richland. And there's a timeout on the field. 13-24 left in the first half. 4 nothing Pine Richland Rams. And we come out of the timeout uh, in the first half. It's 13-24 remaining in this first half between Pine Richland and Upper St. Clair. Pine Richland leading 4 to nothing. That's Katie. No, excuse me. That's uh, Chelsea Johnson with the ball right now. Nicole Joyce takes the draw, and it came out successful here. And... Uh, that's Victoria Teep with the ball. She's challenging the defense, but they're, they've been pretty stingy so far tonight. The Ram defense has been Ram tough, so to speak. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And of course, we couldn't dodge their defenders, so it made it more difficult. Okay, and that's Aaron Lee challenging, but they got. Uh, uh, I don't. They're not going to. I've got to call a charge on Aaron Lee. Well, it probably was if they kept it 
called it the whole way. I, I agree, but um, it was a tough situation. There's so many defenders in there, and there's no room to really uh, to make that cut. That's uh, Caitlin Conwell running down the field as well. She's new to the game. So I've been quiet because the ball's just sitting in someone's stick right now. Um, there's a, just under 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Pine Richland leading four to nothing so far. And number 17 has got a hat trick so far. And who's that? Number 21. Oh, Chris Delirio-Coris gets the uh, the uh, rebound. Uh, gives it back to Lauren Picnic, our goalie. Uh, she's waiting for someone to get open to clear. Hopefully... Uh, A lot of times, teams just put someone on the goal line. Uh, this wings out to the goal line. It's a little bit easier for the uh, goalie to make that pass. Um, yeah. And there's the pass and the ground ball, which might get to Upper St. Clair. Might, uh, but no. And that goes in the Pine Richland ground ball again. And they work their way back up on offense. Number 17, again, our leading scorer on the evening. Ooh, throws away a ball. It's all right. It's going to be our ball. It's a pass. It went out of bounds. I'm um, trying to figure out who's going to be taking the inbound. Is that maybe? Is that number 15 down there? Is that Olivia Martin? I believe so. Someone should help her out. Someone should help her. She's going to get fouled. She's going to get some free space here. Shelby's on a. Here comes Olivia. Another foul. Okay, we've got just under ten minutes now remaining in the first half. Four nothing Pine Ridge on lead. That's Olivia Martin with the ball. She gets clobbered. She's picked up three fouls on the way down here in about forty yards. She's picked up three fouls. That's a pretty good rate of work. See if she can find someone open. Looks like she got Chelsea with a backhand catch. Nice job. Chelsea has Caitlin Conwell. Uh, we haven't. There she goes. She found some space. Oh, just, just didn't quite get in. Uh, they're calling an empty stick on Caitlin. So Pine Richland's ball. Well, that was that the first shot. I don't think it got through. I didn't get through the goal. Yeah. So we're 15 minutes in, and we may or may not have a shot on goal yet. My statistician says no, so it's it may not have gone through to the goalie. But here we go. And maybe we make we're causing it a little difficulty getting the ball out for Pine Richardson, but no, here we go. And Pine Richardson's on the run again. Good job by Caitlin to crash, and good stop by Lauren. Everyone's going she's going to throw way out there. Julia catches it on the run. She's got some space. Let's see if she's going to try to do something. Oh, just misses the shot, but she's good clear. We got the ball, and we'll have a chance to. Yeah, it yeah, looks like we've been able to kind of, it's, fortunately we've stopped the bleeding a little bit. It's 4 nothing. A goal here would make it look somewhat, you know, somewhat close. See what we can do here. Eight, eight minutes remaining in the first half. It's Victoria Teep with the ball rolling the crease. Oh, she's got someone behind her maybe. Oh, they have too many defenders there. And someone would think with five defenders in there, the, the one of them was in shooting space, but apparently not. Aaron Lee behind that. 
Oh, finds a quick pass. Oh, oh, oh that was a... Oh! No way. No, did not go in. It went wide. Oh, this defender here is running that ball out pretty well there. They've got space, and they do not have numbers, though. So, Caravazzi does a good job slowing down the defender. It kind of came straight at her. So, oh. so Pine Richland's offense has slowed it down a little bit, having a 4 nothing lead in here in the first half. Kind of a uh, good job, but uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, Tommy, my actor does a good job denying the entry. Uh, Molly gets cut on the inside and it's a goal. So it's 5 nothing with 6.21 left in the first half. Pine Richland in the lead. Five nothing. St. Clair yet to have a shot on goal. A couple gone wide, the opportunities, but for the most part, Pine Richland has been leading in possession. Uh, pretty a little bit quicker out there. Better stick skills, good. Let's see if St. Clair can get one here though in this first half. And then loose ball. Yeah, that ball might not have been a high enough draw there, but they let him play on, and Pine Richland gets the ball again and sets up shop for their offense. Seventeen shoots high. It's going to be Pine Ridge and Ball still. Pine Ridge and working. Oh, she turned. She might have a shot. Oh, finds a wide open player right in the middle there, and it's six to nothing. Pine Richland leads. Five minutes remaining in the first half. St. Clair's really struggling here. Six nothing. Okay, looks like um, Molly. Molly Krasik at the circle. That ball. Oh. Unbelievable. Even the lucky bounces are going Pine Richland's way. I mean, most of those wins they've had or they've earned, but uh, that one was an unlucky bounce for St. Clair. And here they come. Good defense by Tommy. Tommy Lackner has some pretty good uh, technical skills there on defense. I like the way she sets up. Feet, footwork is very good. And Pine Richland going behind the net. They've spread it out. You can, as you can see, their offense is way outside the arc. And they're, they're way out there, giving themselves some room to make cuts. Now, now they're kind of starting to collapse. Good job by Kara. And 17 again, seven to nothing. St. Clair really having some troubles with Pine Richland. Let me just put one roll around. Yeah. It, it, it's a game where if you have a couple good players can throw and catch, you can isolate them and 
and get and get the goals out of it. Because it's a difficult game to defend. So if you have someone who has an advantage, it, you can really take advantage. Okay, it looks like Molly Krasick again with a draw. Chelsea Johnston and Tommy Lackner on the circle. Try to get one here. That ball did not get anywhere. And the, oh, how many times are we going to see that happen? Oh, that one bounce and into the stick of Pine Richland. It just it, it seemed to be the same thing that was happening at Char Valley, except occasionally we 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 had some some opportunities to score. It's a good job by Molly, putting a stick on her. Oh, they, that is not that is not a foul. If the guy would watch college women's lacrosse, they. Hmm. I'm frustrated because, well, maybe because we're losing seven nothing. But, oh. But she had to be in the crease to get that ball out of there, if I recall. Seriously, the ball was in the crease. Boy, I really could use a color man right now. They had to keep me keep me real, but uh, so I'm gonna have to like voice some opinions. But anyway, seven nothing. Pine Ridge and lead the Lady Panthers with three minutes remaining in the first half. Good job at Chelsea. They're going to call the stick again. That is good. That. Ugh. On, uh, uh, this ref obviously did not play ladies across when he was younger. So Pine Ridge and ball at the eight meter. Oh, uh, Lauren almost gets that tip ball. We gotta find it though. That's gonna be a foul on Julia. He doesn't like it when you put your stick parallel to the ground. Yeah. I, I think she might pass it to one of her players here. Yep. That was a good idea. That was not shooting space. It's been shooting space all night for Upper St. Clair, but not this time. Molly does a good job splitting the defenders on the way out. Watch your stick, watch your stick, watch your stick. Yep, trailing back. Someone could have, should have told her. We had, we had a person up in the booth letting her know, but no man in the field letting her know. So another uh, turnover. Pine Richland with the ball beyond the net, minute and a half remaining in the first half, and Pine Richland with a commanding 7 nothing lead. Very surprising out, output from uh, St. Clair, who's put together some big scoring nights earlier in the, earlier in the season. Um, shut down right now, um, and, and some really talented offensive players from Pine Richland. So it looks like uh, Pine Richland might wait for the last shot here. Yeah. <laughs> At the rate they were scoring earlier, they could have uh, gotten a few goals in the last minute. But it looks like they're going to go for the last last uh, shot. 41 seconds left in the first half. Pine Richland, oh, oh. Draws Lauren out there. Good job. Cover the outside flank. Oh, that's a long pass, but it's well collected by number two. Julia pushes off there. Got away with one there. Good defense. We got eight seconds for Manny. Oh, 17 made a spin. Oh. Uh, she gets off some nice shots. She does. She gets them off some... Those low angled shots where you. Th so, with five seconds remaining in the first half, Palmerston gets that eighth goal that they were looking for. Uh, it's 8 nothing first half, Pine Richland. 
Ah, oh, boy, I can't wait for this halftime speech. Might be pretty rousing. Chelsea's going to take the draw. Thank you. Tommy Lackner on the circle with uh, Molly Krasik also on the circle. Uh, just our luck, we'll probably win this draw, right? <laughs> we're going we're to win the draw, but not get... Oh, no, they got it anyway, but... Oh, foul. All right. So it's 8 nothing at the end of the first half. Pine Richland with a commanding lead. Uh, we'll come back at the second half, and let's see if we can get the Lady Panthers rolling. Thank you. All right. We've, we're back at the second half of this lacrosse game between Upper St. Clair and Pine Richland Rams. Pine Richland had a fantastic first half, leading 8 to nothing. Uh, but let's see if the Lady Panthers can put some uh, numbers on the board. And But uh, a similar story to the second, first half. Uh, that draw goes right to Rich, uh, Pine Richland Ram. Lady Ram, you maybe. They draw that ball out. Looks like they, they, maybe they've been instructed to press out a little higher because I, yeah, they're going to need that ball to be turned over. To, if nothing else to get them mistakes, maybe. I mean, but it'll, it'll cause them to do, that's shooting space, unfortunately. Yeah. But that's what, ha I mean, that's what you do. I mean, if you get, you get all that open space, someone's got to come into cover and there, it creates a shooting space. So, decent opportunity. She's kind of wide. We do have a couple players down low. Until shoots and well done by Lauren. Someone's got to stay back for a good quick outlet there by Lauren. Oh, that ball's got some spin on it. Good click, good pickup by Tommy Latner. She's got the number. Someone's, someone, they're just back if she has to. No, good job by Tommy. Getting away from the pressure. There she goes, finds Molly Krause at the 30 yard line. Molly brings it up. She might just go right to goal here. Take a shot, Molly. Yeah! Oh, and they wave it off. Are you kidding me? Shooting space violation gets waves off our first shot on goal, our first goal. The, the refs don't call shooting space all night against Pine Richland until now. Um, someone might, some might be clamoring for B.B. McCousney to be refereeing this game. See, and that, no goal, no goal. Takes it away from us. So we did get a shot on goal there. This is their first clear. First shot. On eight meter, she got a shot. The eight meter one ended up being a shot. Oh, that's too bad. Katie White gets that ball. Maybe she has some space. Maybe not. I think we. Uh, that's not shooting space. It was a two player right in front of her, but we didn't score. Maybe. Maybe we, uh, we still got too many players on that crease. There are five players running around the circle. Uh, makes it makes it too easy for the defense to cover. But but there's just too many people to run through. Okay, it's Katie Wade out wide. Katie Wade out wide. Tommy Lackner makes a nice dash of goal, but no shooting space, even though it was covered up on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be big stickler for that. That's Victoria Teep. Over to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee rolls through the crease. Gets that ball out to Molly Krausick. Yes. Goal. Great goal. They're going to count that one. It's 8-1. to one. The Panthers are on the board, and Molly Krausick gets us on the board. Okay, well that's good. I mean, it gives a little confidence. It's good that we any time we score a goal is good. So we'll see what happens. It's eight one lead, Pine Richen, of course, and uh, in a game like this, if Pine Richen starts to get a little nervous, they can just sit on the ball once they get it. Uh, really, no shot clock, so it's going to be difficult to get back in a game like this. Twenty two minutes remaining in the second half. Looks like Chelsea's in the center again, taking the draw. Well, that goes straight back. Yeah. Straight back. Yeah. Julia gets the ground ball, comes out wide, finds Katie White. Back, maybe. Katie White's got two players dagging at. 
Get it back. Oh, okay. oh, oh, that was a good pass. We got time. We got time. All right. Whew, good clear. Eventually, they cleared that ball out. That's some uh, intense uh, midfield defense there put on by Pine Richland. And uh, Aaron Lee brings it back behind the net. There, there's just way too much traffic in front of the net. Kitty White out wide. Back out to Tommy Lackner. He's going to try to go in, but there's really nowhere to go because there's four girls in front of her. Victoria Teep scoops the ball up, gets the ball back to Aaron Lee. That's Molly Krasik with the ball in the middle. There's no, I, why wasn't that shooting space? Three girls rolled right into the middle of the... There's Tommy Lackner with the ball, back over to, to uh, Victoria Teep. That's Aaron Lee with the ball, gets it over to Katie White. Katie tries to make a cut. On the ground. Up. Oh. It's going back the other way. Pyrrhson with the ball. Makes a long pass on the run. Well collected by the Pyrrhson ball. Oh, she made a nice trip by Julia. It's all right. Yeah. All right, Pymerson with the ball out by, what was that the 12 meter? What do they call that? I don't know what that second arc is. No. Wide open. Oh, good. Way to shut down the offense there. I feel like Pymerson will be somewhat deliberate. There's no reason for them to rush to the goal, give up the ball. But here we go. Good job. Way to come back by Chelsea, but they don't like that when you do that. I don't know why. Maybe because it's illegal. I don't know. Maybe they think it's illegal. Anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a slashing call, I guess. Pine Richland will have the ball at the 8-meter. However, we do have a number of players down by the bot, by the goal. Might make it difficult. Oh, but they score anyway. Wow. 9-4. to 9-1. to one. Sorry, 9-1. to one. 18, minute, 18 and a half minutes left. 44 or something like that. Yeah, Ends in a four. Ends in a four. Okay, ends 44 in a four. or something like that. Yeah, it was, it was, 44 or something like that. Yeah, it's at 44 there. So we have, uh, who's got orange shoes? Is that Tommy Lackner taking the draw? Didn't quite get up high enough. We'll do it again. Same set of midfielders, but Tommy's going to take the draw here. That's nice and high. Where's the ball? Get into a white. Someone, uh, 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 if it's on the ball too, ground too long, it seems to pop up in the Pine Richland's stick. And it does. Nope. Pine Richland with the ball. Coming back at it again with a 9-1 lead. Brian Richmond brings that ball back out. Really finding some open space here. Oh, they almost did commit the pick, but they made a switch on that. Nice play. Number 17 is having a field day on today out of Panther Stadium. So it's 10 to 1. Yeah, perfect. That's a play. Well done. So Pine Richland really working some good plays. 
getting some good pos possession time. And of course, with a 10-1 lead, 18 minutes left in the game, some heads are starting to drop in, on the Lady Panther side. All right, Tommy Lato going to take that draw again. That last one was nice and high. There we go, another nice high one. Yeah, Tom, come on, baby. Oh, that was a – come on, let's pick that ball up. Oh, nice pickup by Pine Richland. Ran right around outside. Oh, found her, found her player wide open. They're, they're, they're putting on a clinic here tonight. 11 to 1, 10. We're in the mercy rule now. Mercy rule. 17 scores. Marina Miller with a goal freshman. Puts him into the 11 to 1 lead, 10 goal lead, which is a uh, mercy rule, which basically in women's lacrosse isn't too much. It just means that in between goals, they'll let the clock run. Oh, good job. Nicole, Nicole Joyce gets the, the draw win there. She's going to run her all the way down for the upper screen, Clara Panthers. Gets it wide to uh, Chelsea Johnston. Back to Nicole Joyce, uh, over to Jaden Mellorino. Victoria Teep. Victoria Teep does not get, draw a foul, but they don't like it when you put your stick out. So she does pick up a foul. No, it wasn't shooting space. It was more of a push, I guess. But she'll have the ball at the eight, mark, eight meter mark. Number of Pirates and defenders down low, though, so this might be a difficult one to get uh, get off a good shot. Uh, that was, oh, that should have been shooting space there. Go ran right up to her. <laughs> anyway. Back to uh, that's Aaron Lee over to Katie White. Katie makes a. It's Aaron Lee digging that ball up. So they look like they're spreading it out a little bit more here. They're not kind of camped in front of the goal like they were trying earlier in the game. Yeah, this. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm watching his team play here and all that. I think uh, at this level, oh, nice play by the def goalie. Nice nice stop there. And at the high school level, I think it's best just to isolate your best players and make them do the work. Some of these team plays don't always uh, work out. Nice outlet pass by the Pine Richland Rams. Clear that ball down the sideline. Caravaggio comes in on the defense. Pyrrhusland sets up behind the net. Caravaggio on defense on the ball. Oh, good stop by Lauren. Yep, and she does have it. Let's see if we can get that ball cleared out. So I want you to turn around quickly. That's the best way to clear it is when you – that ball might be a little long. Let's get white uh, – that was shielding – Oh, good push by Chelsea. You're going to call foul on St. Clair. 14-20 remaining in the second half with an 11-to-1 lead by Pine Richland over Upper St. Clair. Not a good night for the Lady Panthers. Hope to do better after, you know, having, having beaten this team last year in an overtime game and the year before in the playoffs, losing only by two goals to a number one seeded Pine Richland team. Thought they'd play all right to, against them tonight, but uh, really it's not coming up for them.
Okay, good stop there by St. Clair. Oh, they, how can that, there we go. We're going to call a foul. She got squeezed there on the outlet. I think I see Chelsea open. Hopefully she. That, that's the player. She, she picked that up from uh, the Chartiers Valley player last. Oh, there we go. I think she'll be so bad to run that down. The, that ball does have some spin on it sometimes. Chelsea, Chelsea beat a path all the way down there. Oh, that was a slash. Yes. Chelsea wanted that one, and she got it. That was nice to see. So it's 11 to 2. All right, it's uh, 11 to 2, 13 minutes remaining in the game between Pine Richland and Upper St. Clair. And uh, came off a Chelsea Johnson goal where she uh, willed that goal, ran all the way through a few players and put off a nice shot. And now uh, Chelsea gets the... Uh, Gets the uh, draw again, pulls it back out, finds Nicole Joyce. Nicole Joyce brings that ball into the middle, but she gets hounded by a number of players from Pine Richland. Jane Miller ran over to Aaron Lee. Over to Katie White. Uh, that's apparently tries. See what's out there. Couldn't find anything. And now we have Katie checking on the other side. Girls are doing some kind of formation here. It's a modified octopus, I'm being told. Katie White steps in. She's going to find a shot, and she did. Katie found that first step in past the defender. Reminds me of the uh, early Katie White years when she would do that roll crease or crease roll. Very effectively. Looks like she's found her that step there again. Puts the game at 11 to 3 with 12 even remaining in the game. Pine Richland, of course, with the lead, uh, having gotten off to a real quick start, eight nothing lead at the half. So it goes back to Upper St. Clair, uh, to Pine Richland. Could you know what? It's all right. I'd, I'd like to see the triple teaming. Like they dumped, they've done that quite a bit to us on the way up with the ball when we're trying to clear. It's kind of it's good defense. It slows slows the uh, breakaways down a bit. Looks like we're going to play some aggressive defense for the rest of the game here. Uh, yeah, kind of have to without the shot clock. So they bring the ball safely behind the net. Oh, they find a player up front. Couldn't deny the shot, though. Forty-four is driving to the middle there, but denied by Caravaggio. Pine Richard safely puts the ball back out out high. Oh, well, that, I, I would have to say that player stumbled into Julia, and uh, Julia gets, picks up the foul. I think we'll be all right, though, since Tommy Latter comes in to step in to help. Uh-oh, wide to the game. Okay, just enough. It's a game of just about uh, just a you know, half step and you're gone, other half step and you can't get around. So a foul in St. Clair again. Looks like we're going to have an eight meter. But no, 
deny the opportunity of a clear shot. Bring the ball out safely. And Pine Richland sets up again behind the goal. And with an 11-3 lead, no reason to rush things. So we got 9.50 left in the uh, game. 11-3, Pine Richland with the ball. And a foul on St. Clair for shooting space. I, I, in that case, once again, I, I don't know. They, uh, comes off. Julie didn't think that ball, the ball whirled all the way past the 12 meter. So Pine Richland gets to set up again. It was a nice stop by Lauren Picnic. Ball just rolled all the way out to a Pine Richland attacker. Here's where they kind of lull you until they and until they can get that step around you for an easy goal. This is a this is tough tough to defend when the when the other team can stop and start. Oh, nice shot. Yeah, she's having quite a night. Like I was mentioning earlier, she can get that shot off in many different levels. So it's 12 to 3 in favor of Pine Richland with 8 to 50 remaining in the game. Uh, St. Clair really just scratching to kind of kind of get something on the board most of the game. Uh, number 17, Maggie Collins, is having an outstanding evening for Pine Richland. Seven goals on the night. Oh, Molly gets that ball. Oh, that was a slice of the head. Sphere, you'd think, as they call it. That, that, mm. Anyway, I'm, 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 I'm biased, of course. Ball back behind the net to Aaron Lee. Jaden Millerino with the ball over to Molly Krosick. Ah, that ball intercepted by Pine Richland defense. Hopefully it'll run out of bounds. No, it's a wide field. She has time to collect it. Didn't see anybody on St. Clair even near it. Ah, oh, but they like to call on those fouls. Pine Richland brings that ball down to the goal line, trying to make a move. It's going to bring it back up top. Looks like they've taken Maggie Collins off the field, fortunately, but still wide open. Uh, no shooting space. There was no shooting space because neither player came into in the line of the play, but they had their six out to the side. They still called it. Very disappointing there. Referee should have seen it. I, I could see it. They both ran to the sides with their sticks in the middle. And it's a goal. 13 to 3. Thirteen to three, seven minutes remaining. Pine Richland commanding the game. Very little upside for Upper St. Clair this evening. Who have a packed schedule this week with three games during spring break. Tomorrow night they'll be playing Section Foe Seton LaSalle and on Thursday another Section Foe Shady Side Academy at home. No, no one wants to get that ball white. There we go. Julia De La Parra with the ball running down the sideline. Julia still holds on the ball. She sends it over to Chelsea. Aaron Lee behind the net. Over to Jaden Millerino. Chelsea Johnston. Chelsea it had to be shooting space. There were three girls on the line. That, that 
Very disappointing. The refs don't seem to see the green blend into the field. I'm not sure. That's a long pass. Let's hope it's, uh, nope, doesn't go to white though. She gets knocked over, but they're still not gonna give a foul. Krista gets a ball, get hounded behind her. She's got someone behind her if she needs it. Oh, good job, I get it out of there. And it's in Chelsea Johnson's hand who finds Aaron Lee. Bring the ball up the, up the field. It's been a difficult time for the Panthers on the offense tonight with three goals. Back behind the net to, uh, I think that's Jaden back there. Over to Aaron Lee. Katie White possessing the ball, brings it out, checks, sees nothing open there. There's five, just under five minutes remaining in this game. Pine Richland with a commanding 13 to three lead. They've had a commanding lead all night. Really, really uh, impressive effort by, uh, by especially their number 17 player with seven goals on the evening. So that's uh, Olivia Martin with the ball. Tries to get in the middle. Tommy, Le Tommy Latner gets knocked down and looks like she might get an eight meter call. Yeah, it is, and so Tommy's gonna get a chance here though. It looks like there's quite a few defenders down on the, uh, down by the crease, which might make it very difficult, especially coming from this angle. It's gonna be a difficult shot, but um, it also kills time while the uh, ref uh, pushes players back. Yeah, that, that. So, Katie White behind the net, back to, uh, throws it into the middle and it's uh, picked up by Pine Richland. And what do they do? I think the refs, well, okay. I, I have no idea. Oh, okay, let's just go into St. Clair. Three and a half minutes remaining in the game. St. Clair's going to have the ball. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but they're going to talk about it and let the rest of the clock run off. I mean, if they make the call. Get in position, let's play ball. She has a pretty, I'm not exactly sure what the call was, and, but I know it just cost us a minute of playing time. Back behind the net to Katie White, who has a goal in the evening. Aaron Lee with the ball. Aaron tries to get in there. Looks like the ball It's going to be, Katie White might come up with a ground ball. Yes. Katie gets it back to uh, Olivia Martin. Over to Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee gets that ball back. So it's good to see the White's got the, the at least clearing out some space for cuts. Unfortunately, not really uh, getting too many opportunities. So there's two and a half minutes remaining in this 13 to three lacrosse match between Pine Richland, who does have that lead over Upper St. Clair. And uh, Laurel's waiting patiently for an opportunity to strike. Aaron Lee with the ball. Aaron Lee brings the ball out a little bit, tests the defense, Katie White. Over to Olivia. Olivia tests the defense. Uh, oh, Katie White might roll out. Nope. And now they all come running in towards the net. <laughs> oh, boy, there were about five of them just decided to give up and run into the net. All right, Aaron Lee with the ball. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, and we're back to setting up with three behind the net. And uh, boy, this is reflect. This is reminiscent of the Baldwin game when in the second half when we just sat with the ball over and over. So uh, the time is running down now. With um, uh oh, what was that? What that wasn't even in the, the the run of play. I'm not sure. I wasn't really watching. I'm sure. So you guys with the DVRs can run that back and let me know what uh, what happened out there. But. But, but uh, yeah, there's a, there's a yellow card. So we are a player up. 
with uh, the last one minute and 17 seconds remaining. And uh, yes, while down 10 goals, this would still be nice to put another goal on the uh, scoreboard. And uh, that is Chelsea with the ball. Oh, goes wide. Katie White picks that up. Go to the goal. Go. Oh. Who's coming off? Chelsea's coming off. Here comes Molly Krasik. It's Olivia Martin with the ball. Oh, there's Molly Krasik. Shooting space, I would hope. Okay, so Molly Cross will get the eight meter. And thanks for having our guests in the uh, in the booth with us tonight. Uh, Jack Dale Power, Matt White, and Tame Izuki. That ball goes wide. Still still St. Clair ball with 30 seconds left and 13 to 3 lead. Let's see if they can put another one on the board. Oh, right there, Tommy Lachter's in there for, and gets a goal. Big fan in the booth here with us tonight. Tommy Lachner gets a goal. And it's 13 to 4. So Thomasina Lackner scores and gets us uh, with with a 13 to 4 within a 13 to 4 score here. Pine Richland uh, with the lead and just under 30 seconds remaining. Who do we have here taking the draw? Is it uh, Nicole Joyce maybe? Well, Joyce has had some luck tonight with the uh, draw. Maybe not luck, but she's had some success, I should call it. Uh, but I didn't like the way that one went. So uh, it's going to go to Pine Richland. No. Yeah. She's taking it to the limit. She's, putting, she's pushing the edge. Oh, good job there on defense. And there's 15 seconds left. They might just kill that. Oh, no, they, no, maybe some, I mean, some of these other players still want their goals. They want their chance to play in varsity. So uh, with uh, five seconds remaining, we might be ending this game at uh, 13. So it's a 13 to four Pine Richland victory tonight. Uh, not a great performance for represent Clearly, but uh, fortunately it's a non-section game. And let's hope they can uh, perform much better against Section 4's Seatless Sound on Shadyside Academy tonight. Thank you.